Hello, everyone. By seeing, understand, and acting, we here at Hillstone Networks are reshaping cybersecurity towards cyber resiliency to create security that works. Today, we'll help you start off the journey on the right foot by setting the foundation right. It all begins by marrying connectivity with security. I'm Gary Wang, Product Marketing Manager here at Hillstone Networks, and I am joined today by Li Chun, Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Hillstone Networks, who will help us out with the Q&A section. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. During the presentation, you're invited to type any questions you may have in the Q&A box. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation during the Q&A section. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and the link will be shared with all participants after the webinar has ended. And now, let's get going. For our agenda today, let's start by discussing what is the distributed enterprise and what is the remote workforce, as we believe these to be the new norms of today. Then we'll follow up that discussion by considering the pain points of this new norm. We'll then introduce our solution to these pain points, which is a combination of our next-gen firewalls and our HSM SD-WAN controller. Finally, we'll close off today's webinar with a short introduction and demo of the new HSM version 5.1 SD-WAN controller. The distributed or hybrid workforce is no longer just a phenomenon or a fad of the pandemic stricken era. It is now instead a reality that is here to stay for the foreseeable future. When adapting to this new norm, enterprises are forced to consider how to keep up with the increased need for connectivity, especially from a remote perspective. And in light of the rapidly changing threat landscape, how to make sure this increase in connectivity is married to an increase in security as well. To give an example, let's take the VPN technology. While VPN initially increased in usage significantly once the pandemic began, people were quick to notice that VPN by itself wouldn't necessarily suffice. For starters, it isn't the most scalable solution. And from a security perspective, which is perhaps even more important to us, VPNs had a lot of vulnerabilities when not utilized properly. VPN pivoting is one such example. The crux of VPN problems from a security perspective lies in how it's being used by enterprises. By logging in via VPN, if the configuration is not done properly, a remote user could instantly have access to all corporate resources, even the ones they don't necessarily need to use. This becomes problematic because users will find a way to infiltrate using methods such as VPN pivoting, and then from there, escalate their own privileges, privileges, initiate a malicious attack, and steal sensitive information or perform other hostile acts. <coughs> we just gave a detailed example on the previous slide to explain one of the difficulties of the distributed enterprise. Now to generalize. Understandably, in this new norm that is the hybrid workforce, many new pain points have transpired, all of which can be grouped into three general categories, the need for connectivity, the need for scalability, and the need for security. These five pain points that I have listed on this slide each slot into one of these three general categories. First is the need for cost efficiency. This, on a higher level, is related to the need for a more scalable solution. Traditionally, VPNs and MPLS were the dominant technology for allowing remote work. Unfortunately, both these solutions are not very scalable or cost efficient because configuration of additional lines is very tedious and adding more lines is extremely expensive. Second is a need for a highly available network. This, on a higher level, 
is related to the need for improved connectivity capabilities. This was already happening before the remote workforce phenomenon. Specifically, it began with the widespread adoption of cloud-based applications and cloud storage. Since the pandemic, cloud usage has skyrocketed. Since the cloud needs to always be accessible, the pressure and the strain on the network is only going to rise. Third is a need for the support of flexible locations and diverse traffic patterns. This, on a higher level, is related to the need for improved scalability capabilities. Enterprise locations are highly variable nowadays with home offices, branch offices, co-working spaces, pop-up retail spaces, and others, just to name a few. Depending on where the location is, it may require different traffic pattern setups, such as partial mesh or full mesh, given that the traffic will be distributed to a variety of sources, such as public clouds or SaaS applications. Fourth, is the need for policies and configurations to be more context and application aware. This, on a higher level, is a mix of connectivity and security. As data use is scaling endlessly, policies and configurations, both in terms of ensuring connectivity and in terms of ensuring security, have to be have to be able to be take have to be able to take context of the traffic into account. This will not only allow for the more seamless delivery of the data, but can also help with building necessary security schemes that can properly defend specific environments. Fifth and finally, is the need for these solutions to be security centric. This on a higher level, pretty straightforward, is related to the need for augmented security capabilities amidst our hybrid work reality. Now that the workforce is logging into sensitive resources from anywhere, security of those lo locations is questionable and can vary drastically. With such variance, sensitive corporate resources could potentially be in harm's way. Now that we've listed out all the pain points, how can we solve it? In short, we believe the SD-WAN solution can do just that. Hillstone Networks achieves a working standalone SD-WAN solution by combining our SD-WAN controller, known as HSM, along with a CPE device that could exist at a headquarter or a branch, our A, sorry, our a series, for example. Generally speaking, to solve the first pain point of cost efficiency and the third pain point of supporting flexible locations and diverse traffic patterns, is our centralized SD-WAN controller known as HSM. It is equipped with a very convenient feature known as Zero Touch Provisioning, or ZTP for short. Sans SD-WAN, a router or CPE device would have to be configured. Then those configurations would have to map back to configurations on the router or the firewall in the HQ. And from there, additional configurations may have to be matched to other existing CPE devices as well. The amount of mapping for each individual new branch office would take a lot of work. Since the phenomenon of the distributed enterprise, branch offices, as I'll say in quote, are popping up everywhere. For example, when I am working remotely, I as an individual am a new branch office of Hillstone Networks. When Li Xun is working remotely, he, as an individual, is another standalone branch office of Hillstone Networks as well. As you can see, the mess of configurations would add up really quickly with each individual, and then it would get really messy almost instantly. Now, with the SD-WAN solution in place, configurations can be stored. And when new CPE devices are brought online, they can utilize the ZTP feature to instantly gain knowledge of the routing, security, and policy configurations. If anything, with ZTB, new branches, regardless of the topology, can now be deployed with economies of scale. Generally speaking, to solve the second pain point of the need for a highly available networking solution, and the fourth pain point, which is the need for general contextual awareness within policy configuration, both in terms of security and connectivity. To solve this, 
we've equipped our SD-WAN solution with the SD-WAN, which is an SD-WAN controller capable of intelligent routing based on contextual awareness. It's capable of quick and flexible deployment and is equipped with Hillstone's state-of-the-art secure foundation within its firewalls, which can serve as a CPE device that connects to the SD-WAN controller. Remember, I will be repeating this many times tonight. It is the combination of the HSM, which is the SD-WAN controller, and our next-gen firewalls, the CPE device, that a standalone SD-WAN solution can be reached. For creating secure policies that are contextually aware, smart operations and policy management are available via our next-gen firewalls. For creating smart routing, that can be configured via the HSM. Finally, generally speaking, to solve the fifth pain point, which is the need for security-centric solutions, this one we cover hands down. Because Hillstone takes a security-first approach. I also want to take this opportunity to give a special shout out to our existing customers. We had a chance to listen in on their feedback and the pain points that are experiencing. It sounds like many of them are looking for SD-WAN solutions. At the same time, a lot of these existing customers are already using our next-gen firewalls. These Hillstone next-gen firewalls can be configured to serve as a CP device that connects back to the HSM, which is the centralized SD-WAN controller. Last month, we released an update to StoneOS, which is the security foundation behind our next-gen firewalls. This month, we have an update to the HSM central SD-WAN controller. By using these jointly, the enterprise's connectivity and security pain points can be solved in tandem, resulting in what we would call a cyber resilient foundation. Now let's talk about some of the HSM version 5.1 upgrades. To help streamline the configuration process, kind of similar to how the recently released Stone OS 5.5 R9 possesses a VPN configuration wizard for a smoother set of experience, HSM version 5.1 can now establish VPNs via domain name on the WAN ports, in addition to the IP address. By enabling this flexibility, a more stable network environment can be built. This flexibility is further enhanced by an increase in WAN ports. In terms of the security policy configuration, it can now support batch distribution, making the central management process more seamless. HSM's routing policies and configurations can be contextually aware, say voice over IP and a redirect to a simple HTML page are present. HSM's intelligent routing will understand link priorities and place precedence on delivering the voice over IP traffic. Priorities can further be manually configured to adjust to changing needs and situations, thereby maximizing bandwidth efficiency. With this update, HSM version 5.1 can now configure and distribute static routing entries to the associated spoke devices. This eliminates the time and the efforts to configure duplicate or similar static routing policies, especially in large scale deployments. This is also very beneficial for network administrators operating on smaller networks, as it can act as a centralized configuration of sorts. Static routing only adds a small load on the CPU, and it can bypass the complexities of alternative routing methods and leave the network administrator with full control over the routing of a network. In summary, the HSM version 5.1 is able to see because it can gain comprehensive visibility into user, device, and resource access behavior at all the sites. This can be displayed centrally on a full screen dashboard. All connected CP devices can be viewed and various details can be shown. The HSM version 5.1 is additionally able to understand because via dashboard and further expanded granular details, HSM can show who is, ac is accessing what at which location and with which device. This granular detail helps users understand what is happening and allow them to potentially act. Finally, the HSM version 5.1 is able to act 
because as an SD-WAN controller that communicates with CPU devices, which are all powerful next-gen firewalls, the power and performance of next-gen firewalls can fully be leveraged to take action rapidly and as needed. Through this methodology of being able to see, understand, and act, Hillstone's SD-WAN solution can enable greater connectivity capability while ensuring swift action can be taken to mitigate multi-layer and multi-stage threats. To reiterate, we've released the Stone OS 5.5 R9 update. Six defining key updates on our next-gen firewalls as a result of the Stone OS 5.5 R9 update are as follows. First, enhanced intelligent detection and prevention via machine learning and artificial intelligent technology to help users stay ahead of known and unknown threats. An example of this can be found in the way we're leveraging machine learning to halt CNC servers from leveraging domain-generated algorithms to disguise its names and IP addresses. Second, our next-gen firewalls now have refined secure access for the remote workforce with extended VPN capability to tackle changes in the status quo of the workforce. An example of this is our IPsec configuration wizard, which can greatly streamline and expedite the VPN configuration process. Third, we've enabled elevated traffic decryption and encryption performance through hardware acceleration in our next-gen firewalls. Fourth, automated configuration for improved visibility in the operations and management process. One example of this can be seen in the inauguration of our mini policy capability. Instead of large detailed policies that are rather static, we've enabled flexibility and greater speed in creating mini policies that can adapt more quickly to the rapidly changing cybersecurity landscape, which adheres to our theme of cyber resiliency. The fifth general set of key updates in our next-gen firewalls as a result of the Stone OS update is an augmented third-party integration capability. This one's pretty straightforward to understand, so I won't expand too much on it. Sixth and finally, we see an improvement in system robustness and availability. An example of this is how our next-gen firewalls are now able to support hotfixes. High availability is crucial in generating effective cybersecurity schemes and hotfix capabilities can ensure that. Stone OS is a secure foundation and backbone behind all of our next-gen firewalls. A company with this operating system update is release of our highest performing next-gen A series firewall to date. Though such a high powered firewall is not really used as a CPE device, its smaller counterpart, the A200 series, which comes as the A200 or the A200 with Wi-Fi connectivity capabilities is an outstanding, secure, an affordable option. A200 comes in a small desktop form factor and was created for SMBs, or in the grand scheme of things, small branch offices, aka branches of one, aka remote workers. The state-of-the-art next-gen firewall still possesses enterprise-level security features and can operate as a CPU device that is connected and routed to the HSM. I've mentioned this many times already, but just want to restate and highlight this point again. Our stats and research have shown that the majority of our existing customers own some form of a Hillstone next-gen firewall, which can be used as a viable CPE device in Hillstone's SD-WAN solution. Slap on the HSM version 5.1 SD-WAN controller with these existing CPE devices, and the customer will be able to achieve a full-fledged SD-WAN solution. The SD-WAN solution will take their connectivity, security, and high availability capabilities to a whole new level. Speaking of benefits, let's briefly go through again the five highlights of the Hillstone Secure SD-WAN solution. The first benefit is zero-touch provisioning, which we touched upon earlier. In the past, provisioning would nearly need to be done on a pure manual basis, meaning every CPE device and every routing configuration would have to be manually configured. With ZTP, the necessary configurations are inputted prior. From there, when each new branch or CPE device is onboarded, 
it simply needs to connect back to the central management system, which is the SD-WAN controller in Hillstone's SD-WAN solution. From there, the new device can instantly be provisioned and onboarded, hence where the name Zero Touch Provisioning comes from. The second benefit is to allow for VPN overlay automation. Our SD-WAN solution is able to support all different types of WAN links, from 4G and 5G, to LTE broad and broadband, and even the classics like MPLS. We support a multitude of VPN topologies and VPNs can be auto-configured via predetermined templates. The next benefit that is essential to a proficient SD-WAN solution is the support of intelligent routing. This is part of the contextual and application awareness that we touched on earlier in this webinar. Our SC-WAN solution is able to automatically fail over and switch links depending on the application, the type of link that is available, and the type of link that is needed at the time. Additionally, link load balancing is available to ensure the proper division of traffic and ensure that no servers or devices are overloaded. On to the fourth benefit. In order to properly take action, we believe users need to be able to see clearly what's going on and thoroughly understand the details presented. This is why Hillstone Secure SD-WAN solution possesses a detailed full screen dashboard, which can show the relations between devices, where they're located, and more granular details in relation to each individual device. The centralized management beginning from the dashboard makes it easy for users to monitor devices and configure new or existing devices. Additionally, centralized management in the secure SD-WAN solution allows users to gain a firm grasp of how the network is built and how it is functioning. Finally, as is with any Hillstone product, the SD-WAN solution is built on a foundation of security. Our SD-WAN solution which is comprised of the HSM SD-WAN controller and CPU devices, can support the complete host of security. In the example of using our A-Series as a CPU device, the SD-WAN solution will have all the capabilities of our enterprise-grade enterprise -grade firewalls, which include, but are not limited to antivirus, IPS, URL filtering, and others. Now that we've covered an intro of our SD-WAN solution, we will take this opportunity to walk through a demo of the updated HSM version 5.1, which is the SD-WAN controller. All right. Okay, here is the user interface of the HSM version 5.1, which is the SE-WAN controller. On the dashboard, we can see the total number of devices, further proportioned by online, offline, and ZTP devices. There's a device distribution map below, which can show where each device is located specifically in the world. Further down, we can see the number of triggered alarms, along with each respective level of criticality. We can also see the traffic information in relation to each of the devices. This granular visibility helps users easily configure, monitor, and add devices as needed. Under the subheader device, we can select add device to create a new zero touch device. Here, we add in the serial number, name, location, and group that is nested under, which is SD-WAN in this case. This will function as a CPE device and the HSM is our SD-WAN controller. ZTP settings are used for VPN configuration. And in this case, we're going to use a star networking single module. Let's select a customizable pre-configured template and upon selecting the WAN interface, you're good to go. Notice how the device isn't active yet. By selecting the, the new device and clicking Export ZTP Configuration, the Bootstrap configuration will be sent over to the branch office 
together with the device. Now let's do a, a theoretical time skip where the branch office has successfully activated their CP device. We can now see the ZTP status, which is activating and joining the VPN. And at this point, now we can say the device is officially activated. Under the subheader system, we click into monitoring rules to add a new device, Canada, into our monitoring. Back on the main dashboard, we can now see that there's another device that's online. The link isn't strong because it does take a bit for the link to be registered properly. The WAN link monitoring list can be found under the subheader monitor. By clicking on the device's name, you can expand to see more details. More details such as things about its traffic trends, as well as trends about the link quality, such as delays and jitters. You can look at the WAN links, or you can also look at the tunnel links, which essentially, essentially are just the VPN links. Again, you can click on the tunnel name to examine traffic trends and the link quality trends. You can pull data in real time with relation to the devices. If you take a look now, Canada to the US link is now live. If you click into the subheader configuration and then click into policy on the sidebar, you can configure policy-based routing on specific links. To do so, you'll want to create a new link model. Enter the name, select the link you want to use, and denote which tunnel link you're, you're aiming to use. Click Save. And then from there, we've created a sample rule for a specific application. In this case, AIM through Skype will be delivered through that one link we configured. Let's create a new rule by selecting a service and then selecting the model. There are different routing modes we can choose from, such as designated, load, override, or you can just simply customize your own as you see best fit for your business operations. Different business operations may use different routing modes, depending on what is considered to be the most cost-effective and the least intrusive on other critical business operations. We wanted to make sure Hillstone's SEWAN solution could adapt to different models. Now let's take a look at version 5.1. If you've already deployed a form of Hillstone firewall, such as an A series of some sort, and you're looking for an SD-WAN solution to be compatible with it, or if you have an SD-WAN solution in place already, and you're looking for additional WAN ports on the existing deployment, then starting from HSM version 5.1, you can add an additional WAN port to what is the existing network. For this capability, you have the option of doing it for up to four WAN ports. If you take a look here, you'll see the option to edit this network. Click in, choose next, and then here, in addition to the two already existing interfaces, you can continue to add additional extra interfaces. This is a capability of HSM version 5.1 that enhances the flexibility of the solution. This flexibility extends to the policy side, where starting from version 5.1, we added extra security policy configurations. Here, you can define a security policy and then delineate this policy from the HSM SD-WAN controller to all connected CP devices or a subset that you can define. For example, here, we have VPN S2S. Upon clicking in, we can see that there are currently four existing security policies that have already been defined. This here denotes the device that the policy has been applied from. As is with policy configuration, naturally, it makes sense that you can create your own policy by adding in the new name of your choice and then adding the necessary policies or the configurations or any other qualifying information as needed, such as selecting your source zone and source address, the destination zone and address, any of the services you're looking to add in, then the relevant applications that this policy would apply to, which can help build contextual and application awareness, and then schedule when the policy will be applied.
As it may be possible, you may want to limit the impact on normal operations. Then lastly, you'll need to define which connected devices these policies that you just configured will be applied to, as indicated by these drop-down menus on the side of the screen. Starting from HSM version 5.1, we have also begun to support the ability to configure static routing, in addition to dynamic routing to a group of devices in the HSM. As mentioned earlier, static routing adds very little load on the CPU, while having the capability of reducing overhead costs, since it is centralized configuration. Now you can do this by clicking add, naming the new routing configuration and the policy, and then adding in the destination route configuration. From here, there is a pop-up menu to fill out the IP address. Then you will determine what the next hop is. You Determining if it's via an interface or a gateway, because both of these options will be supported. Essentially, what we're trying to do here is we are assigning a set route or a static route to be used, along with assigning the, the gateway or the interface and along with the precedence of value and the weight of this route. Once you have filled that all out, you can apply these rules. Last but not least, let's take a look at how we've been able to streamline operations and management by including device configuration file management into the interface. Here, we can see how all of the connected devices have uploaded their configuration into the HSM for easier management. Looking at this list, the information that is displayed includes the configuration itself with details, you can edit it, you can also add in various descriptions to keep better track of what, what each device is. Any extra notes, you can export the data, import new devices, or even you can do comparisons to see how these configurations may mix or match, as that may be useful when you're configuring new ones. You can also obtain the device configuration of one specific device manually by defining it and choosing it based on this menu that pops up on the side. Perhaps you don't want to just look at the batch policies and you want to see in granular detail how one specific device is performing. Under timing task management, you can create a scheduled and recurring task to receive the configurations of a certain subset of devices. With that, this covers some of the more applicable extra features that are now available as of HSM version 5.1.